And we're back on this 100 dupe attempt. Yes, yeah, so I'm just going to commit to 100 dupes because 90 and 80 just didn't sound good enough, so we're going to target for 80. Now, last few episodes, we got in all the infrastructure, lots of Atmos suit docks, got all the oxygen production up and running, but now I kind of have to get around to, well, the hard bits. I basically need to get lots and lots of the three main things we need. Power, water for our oxygen setup, and food. So first up is power. So down here I'm building a sour gas boiler and I put in, well, I've been pretty much planning one of these for a couple of weeks now, ever since I decided to go to about 80 to 100 dupes. I was putting in some effort in the background just to try and uh, come up with the design. So I hammered one out in debug mode that I'm happy with, but my requirements are a little bit unique um, in some respects. Namely, I've got this petroleum boiler over here that's already running, so I feel no urge to rip it down. I don't need to convert from crude. I'm just going to take the petroleum that's coming out of this because it is volcanic powered. So electricity wise, it costs, it's, it's costs are minuscule. There's no real need to actually up, upgrade this system or do anything with it. It just works. However, I'm doing this not for the power. I'm doing it more for the water. Well, the power is a nice bonus, but the water is also a, a big part of it. So what I kind of need to do is uh, make a petroleum boiler that you don't switch off. Now that's going to be, hmm, well, not so much tricky, just uh, it, it brings a new set of uh, problems that I'm going to need to deal with. Namely, I need to be able to burn off all the natural gas I'm going to be producing as soon as I produce it, or find some way of storing it. Well, no, I'm not going to store it. I'm going to burn it off as soon as I make it. It's basically going to be a straight-through system. I make the natural gas, I burn the natural gas, I get the power and the water out of it straight away. Now, that leads to its own set of problems because I need to make a, a large enough power brick to actually burn it all. Uh, best I can figure, it'll be about 50 to 50 to 60 natural gas generators. So I'm going to need an extremely large power brick to run the whole thing. And I can't actually switch this thing on until I've got that also built as well. So that's sort of my first complication of building this. The next complication after that is my main power grid is pretty much flat out already, so I can't plug this into it. This is going to draw about 6 kilowatts to start, before it starts even paying for itself. So I need some way of getting this up and running without actually drawing on my main grid. So I'm going to have to build up a, a backup coal array just to take care of that. Not a huge deal, but uh, it does mean I'm going to have to put in, you know, a lot of coal generators. An awful, awful, awful lot of coal generators. But at the same time, it will double as a, a backup supply, or... No, that's the wrong word. It will double as my backup power supply for, for my main systems. So it's not a complete waste. So at the moment, I'm just coring this out, and there's nothing too exciting to see here. This whole area is a vacuum. Uh, I may have messed up a bit on the liquid locks down here, so I played around a bit until I got one that pushed the carbon dioxide back. But yeah, I'm building this whole thing in a vacuum to start, because it's just easier to fire the, these things up in a vacuum. So all I'm doing is basically deconstructing blocks, Placing in my ladder segments, it's, it would have actually been easier to just dig through raw materials than actually deconstruct blocks. You can't replace ladders over them. I'd really like if you could do that, actually, or just have some key to force it. But for the time being, I'm basically just coring out the area so I can put in the bits and pieces I want. Yeah, we'll see how this works out. But uh, the only thing I've got actually trapped over here is I dumped all my sandstone down here at some point. Or was it granite? Sandstone? Yeah, sandstone. I basically dumped all my sandstone over there, so I, I was going to... It was a trick I was going to use, but... Yeah, that kind of fell by the wayside because I find a workaround for the problem. Uh, actually, it was someone in the comments who pointed out a workaround to the problem. Never mind. So uh, that's the only thing that I'm losing by cutting off that section, so I'm not too worried. And I've also got a nice big section of the map over here that's free of plants that I can dump in my power brick. But yeah, it's basically going to be a lot of coring out this area. I've got to core out everything here that's got deconstruction commands on it. That's all going to be cored out, and I'm going to have to place in ladder segments as I go to make sure it, it sticks. But uh, once this is all cored out, what I'll do is I'll come back and we'll actually start building this from the ground up. Now, I was going to make this a, an all-you-can-use sort of uh, design, but at the end of the day, I realized my requirements were pretty specific. So I said, well, I've put in an awful lot of effort to obtain lots of space materials. I mean, I've got about, what, 14 tons of thermium, 10 tons of insulation, uh, loads of niobium. Uh, I've got all the space material, so I'm just going to go hog mad and just have fun with it. Uh, I'm going to be using a lot of supercoolant, and by a lot of supercoolant, where is it? I've been stockpiling some over here uh, in this corner, well, once it finishes saving. 
So I've got enough super coolants that I can basically just do whatever the, whatever I want when it comes down to this build. And I'm also going to be using a lot of thermium as well. I don't really see any need to hold back. This is going to be a bit of a challenge getting up 100 dupes, so there's no point messing about. Yeah, so I'll just skip this forward until all of this coring out is done and I've got my ladder segments in and we're ready to actually start putting this sucker together. But uh, yeah, getting this up and running is not going to be a one day project. This is going to probably take me three episodes, uh, maybe four, I'm not even sure to be honest. It took a long time to put it together even in debug mode, so I'm not sure how bad it's going to be in let's play mode. But well, let's find out. Okay, so this is the guts of the outline of my sour gas boiler I'm going to use. Uh, it's about, it's 21 by 39? Uh, 21 by 45. Oh yeah, close enough. But, um, why is it 21 by 45? It shouldn't be. 21 by 44? Hmm. One second. Okay, so maybe I made it a little bit too large. I miscounted when I was making it out. But, uh, yeah, that's gonna be down to about there. So it'll be about that far down, and about this much across, all the way over to these tiles here. I just wanted to get this out of the way so I could see exactly where it's going to be, so I could know where I'm going to actually place my power plant. Uh, this is going to be my coal generators. This is going to be what's used to kickstart it, and basically act as backup power. I'm going to stick in an enormous amount of coal generators here, a bit of a battery bank, and use this to actually kickstart everything off. Uh, actually, we can get rid of all of that. That whole row can go. I'm going to make a double layer of power... well coal generators here and I'll also have to put in some way of extracting the, the CO2. CO2 is about to become much more valuable for me as well. Any CO2 I get I can basically feed that to slicksters, they turn it into crude oil, the crude oil gets turned into petroleum which gets turned, which then gets boiled into sour gas, condensed into methane, turned into, heated up until it becomes natural gas, burned into a natural gas generator which will give me water which I can then put into electrolyzers to make oxygen. Uh, I think I worked it at about 19% of the CO2 I create, I can turn into oxygen. So, yeah, uh, I'm going to want to recycle all the CO2 I can get my hands on, so any CO2 that uh, gets generated by these coal generators, I'm going to want to recycle that back into the system. It's kind of mad when you start getting to this level where you're recycling so much stuff and you realize, yeah, there's an awful lot of processes going on in this game. Yeah. This whole bottom row is just going to be battery banks, and I've got some neutronium over... Oh. What's that doing there? How did you escape the cleanup? And uh, they'll get up there eventually. Oh yeah, so I'm just going to skip forward here. This entire bottom row is going to be batteries. Uh, we'll go with gold. Actually, I'm going to have to put in its own cooling source for this as well. So... Yeah, battery there. I think that's about enough. Yeah, I'll put in a few more. I'm not sure exactly how wide I have to make this. I'm going to have to double check my... Yeah, my, my pictures. Yeah, I keep pictures of stuff, I'm, of designs I've made in debug mode. Uh, just on the debug test map so I can, well, refer to them when I need to actually do something up. Oh, yeah, but uh, I'll just skip forward a bit here until we're ready to put in the, the next layer of power generators. Uh, this is going to be my uh, coal array. It's gotten so late into the game that uh, there's no point actually going with any sort of subtlety at this point. So basically just lots and lots of coal generators. Um, I'm going to put in about 15 on each level, two levels, we'll be looking at about 18 kilowatts of potential power out of it. Pretty good. And that's three, one space for a coal bin, another three, space for a coal bin. And I think is there one more or two more? Yeah, I think it's two, so one, two, four, wait, ah! Okay, I've messed up already. Yeah, three, then three, then three. No. Nah. Nope. Yeah, so one to start, then three, space for a coal bin. Three, space for a coal bin. Three, space for a coal bin. Three, and then I think it's two. Yeah, that should be it. So 3, 6, 9, 12, 13, 14, 15. Now the reason for this, the gap like that is so that I can put in uh, a storage bin. And we'll make that out of... Actually, it doesn't really make a difference. We'll go with igneous rock. And then we're going to put in auto sweepers to make sure that this can be filled automatically. These things want to be... I want to make sure that they can maintain themselves. I'm pretty sure I'm going to go with a... 
not just this, but um, actually, that yeah, they can sweep both of them. I'm also going to put in shipping rails so that they can ship in the coal as well. And I'll hook that back up to my main storage area, just so that I can dump all the coal into them if needs be at an automatic pace. Uh, we're also going to need conveyor receptacles actually to load these up. Hmm. Yeah, one for each bin. No need for anything too fancy. This is just going to be a lot of brute force and... Ah! What did I make everything out of? Okay, the auto supers are gold with those conveyor receptacles. No, they should not be there. There we go. Uh, gold. Uh, this should allow me to just squeeze in enough powder power out of this 18 kilowatts. That means I can get a good jump start. And if anything ever does go wrong with the system, I can actually fix it. Uh, shipping rails. Actually, no, we're going to go with mesh tiles above this as well. I'm using mesh tiles everywhere so that I can let the carbon dioxide flow through. I will put in its own cooling solution, but it's more a case of this should only activate temporarily and then shut off again afterwards. It should only be there to boot up the system and to cover in case anything goes horribly wrong. And there's sedimentary rock in there, we don't care about it. Actually, we can deconstruct all of that. Well, we could if the save would actually finish. Ooh, I might have to put in more access points. Uh, this could be problematic. Uh, you know what? No, that'll do. Oh, so that's how the dupes are getting in. I should probably make a ladder that goes up a little bit higher there. Ah, uh, you can put it there. Deconstruct that. Dupes are about to run out of one of their access points, and that's the one that brings in the transit tube. Yeah, hey, but uh, this is all pretty much self-explanatory and straightforward. I haven't run the power cabling through here yet, because, well, it's going to give a massive decor negative. I want to wait until all my dupes have finished their, their chores, and then the last thing I'll put in will be the power. I'll make sure that the auto sweepers are running off it as well. That way I don't have to worry about them actually, the auto sweepers ever running out of power. So long as they're hooked up to the scholar rate, there should be no issues. Um, I will have to hook up smart batteries, of course, which reminds me. Uh, let's get rid of that annoying smart battery symbol. Yep, and we'll just hook it into all the coal. Damn, a long way from the start of the game where you're just barely got enough metal for that one one smart battery. Now it's like, yeah, we'll just throw then 50 of them. It's fine. Uh, I'll just uh, finish this up and put in the second layer as well. Okay, so this is starting to come together at last. Uh, I, can't, I, I can't actually remember at any point thinking I was uh, going to end up building something this ridiculous. Coal is not really a renewable power supply, but I suppose as backup and emergency power and for kickstarting things, it does the job. Uh, I'm just leaving some room in here for a steam turbine heat deletion device. Honestly, this shouldn't run that much. I, I might even be able to get away with using wheeze warts, but uh, I don't believe in half measures. So I'm going to stick a steam turbine heat deletion device on top of here and then just run some pipes around. Just the whole way. I'll probably actually use super coolant for this. I'm swimming in the stuff, so I might as well actually get some use out of it. So I'll run a super coolant loop through here and I'll chill it all down to about 20 degrees or something. There's no real need to go too crazy, but I've got the materials. I might as well start burning them. These are going to be my last big projects. Now... Uh, yeah. Put some ladder chunks here below these and they can actually land. Uh, I discovered that just recently. Well, I discovered you could do it the opposite dire direction, as in you could turn these the other direction and fire them up, and the, they'd land on top of ladders, but eh, also works on the downward angle as well. Now, uh, for doing the coal, I was going to try a bunch of things, but I've decided I'm just actually going to ship it all the way down from the top of the map. I have a drop-off up at the top of the map. Where is this? Uh, here, where all my... Uh, this is where all my rockets drop off to. They all come down and drop off here. And I have one rocket currently still going out to the coal planet. Uh, the closest one. Where is it? Yeah, this one. So, 26% of the return cargo is coal. I'm going to might, well, might as well have access to that. It's not going to be enough to keep them all going if I actually do have to run them all constantly. But that should not be an issue. Uh, yeah, slight modification here just to tighten it up. I, I messed up when I was making that. But that's why we sketch these things out first before we start putting in all the bits and bobs. Now, yeah, I'm just going to skip forward this again. This is just one basically giant coal array uh, with some shipping rails. Actually, that was one thing I forgot. I forgot to do the shipping rails on the top. I'm just making it a gold amalgam because it's it's my most common material at the moment. Though that may change considering how quickly I burn through this stuff. Yeah. I'm going to run these both off one rail. Now, that's going to seem a bit crazy because... 
Well, there is absolutely no way I think that uh, one rail is going to be able to provide enough coal for all of these if they all run simultaneously. But it's more a case that this is backup power and it's only going to run at the start and maybe if I have any issues in the interim. But barring that, it should just sit there and do nothing. Well, that's the hope. Let's... Let, that's the hope that it doesn't mess up. Assuming there's no problems, this should only run on boot up of the sour gas boiler, and after that, it should never need to kick in again. I should be generating about 32 kilowatts or yeah, something like that from the the natural gas generator. So once that's up and running, I should never need this again. Yeah, I'm just gonna skip forward till this is done. It's mainly just more of this building, 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 and lots of it. Uh, though I am waiting on more dupes. We're up to 27 dupes active, and we've got six more in rockets. So. 33, we're up to 33 dupes. I'd like to get a, a little bit closer to the 50 mark uh, sooner rather than later. But anyway, I'll, I'll skip forward until this is almost done. So I've got the bulk of this down, but uh, I've made a few minor modifications as I went along just to change things up. I threw in a four power transformers here. I figure since I've got the cooling solution going in here, I might as well get my, a few power transformers so that I can plug in my, uh, my sour gas boiler. Also, uh, I was going to vacuum this place out first and make it all free of oxygen before I started dumping in the CO2. But then I thought, no, that's that's too much effort. So I'm just going to be lazy and I've thrown in a, a gas filter. So I'm just going to filter out the gas at first. I'll dump the oxygen out and then I'll just let the CO2 recirculate back in. It's not a big deal. It's just uh, th this allows me to fire this up without having to worry about vacuuming it out first. Eventually the CO2 will replace all the oxygen. And once that happens, I can remember to cycle out the or start dumping the CO2 over to my slicksters when the time comes, which will. OK, that should be a while in the future. Uh, for this, I'm actually just going to plug this directly into the power spine. I figure, why not? I'm literally right beside the power brick. So I'm going to run the power up here, but I'm going to vacuum out this area just so there'll be no temperature transfer. This is going to be a different temperature to this. This is going to be a different temperature to that. This is all just going to get really confusing if I don't. Oh, also, I need to actually change that liquid loop to go up there. That is a mistake. OK, so there's a couple of modifications that need to be made. But this is basically just a really big coal array. Not not too exciting, nothing too uh, advanced involved. It's just a bulk build. I've also got all of these coal bins filled up already. I've My dupes have been having some downtime, so I got them to take care of that. Right, I'll just skip forward a bit more here. This is just standard issue stuff. So I'm starting to get into the slightly trickier parts of this. Uh, I'm putting in this heat deletion device because, well, coal generators do actually generate quite a decent bit of heat. Uh, if we look here... 9 kilo DTUs. So basically, for per perspective, a wheezewort and hydrogen can delete 12 K DTUs. So I would need an awful lot of wheezeworts to keep this cool, so I'm going with a, a power-based solution. Which, considering that I'm, I'm actually almost overloading my current grid, probably not my smartest play, but I am splitting my grid in half once I get this up and running. And this is technically its own new grid anyway. So not the biggest deal. However, I'm doing a little um, feature here. Now you'll see this on several people's designs where they have the loop uh, well, they're going to have their coolant coming through the aqua tuner but then they have this overflow so that if the aqua tuner is not on the loop just keeps circulating now the reason for that which took me an embarrassingly long time to figure out is actually to do with oh actually one second I need to deconstruct this so my dupes can get in it's to do with when uh, you're not actually using it now let's see we've got uh, up here we've got this steam turbine heat deletion device and here is the the liquid that goes through it However, what happens is when you're not using this device, there's a contents there. You'll see there's super coolant there at 29 degrees in the pipe. It's basically inside an insulated pipe, but it's inside the steam area. So what happens is slowly over time, when this is not active, that liquid will start to, well, change temperature and could eventually flash to steam, at which case it'll damage the pipes. That's why you sometimes see the pipes that are here and here on a, an aqua tuner have popped. That's because they're, the aqua tuner is used so infrequently that the liquid sits there for, for too long and eventually just overheats. Even if you're using ceramic piping, you give it 50 cycles, it'll exchange enough heat to actually boil what's in there. So in this instance, what'll happen is the supercoolant should come along here, and then if this is not on, it'll just hop across and go across this bridge and continue around in the loop. This just means it's constantly circulating and it will never stop. That took me way too long to figure out why people were doing that, but uh, yeah, that would appear to be the main reason. Anyway, I've, uh, for power reasons, I am going to hook this all up to this battery box. This is staying off my main grid because there's going to be an awful lot of extra power draw and I don't want to throw that onto my grid, which is already pretty borderline. My main grid was designed for, well, just for a normal base. I wasn't really planning on going this far with it when I originally built it. Now, uh, what do we, oh, yeah, I've also dumped a big pool of super coolant over here so I have something to draw on. Uh, though we're going to want to put some water in there. Actually, no. First, 
We're going to insulate this sucker up. Then we're going to jump in the water. Uh, power. Yeah. Now you notice here I've got this vacuum pump in here. I'm going to actually vacuum out this whole area. Namely because I've got this... The power is coming through here and those uh, conductive joint plates are quite conductive for heat. This is going to have to be kept cold. This is going to be hot. And I don't want the two of them sharing atmosphere because they'll, they'll interfere with each other. So vacuum, perfect insulator. I could make it much smaller, but... Uh, this just seems like a, a small, easy place to vacuum out without much effort. So I've just got some automation in here. Visco liquid lock. God, I love those so much. Once you get access to visco gel, making a liquid lock just becomes so much faster and so much simpler. Assuming you keep your eye on it and don't let it overflow. Again. Now. Uh, oh, yeah. Next up, we'll just throw some water in here. And once that's done, we should be almost good to actually fire this sucker up. Uh, okay, that's done, that's done, actually. I'll leave those up there. I might actually I need to add in more water. But once that's all done, I can actually start uh, running this coal generator. Now, I'm only going to run it briefly at the start. Once it's charged with the batteries, it should be good to go. I haven't set up the shipping rails from the top yet. Well, namely because I don't need it. I've got all the coal bins filled. 20 tons of coal in each one of those. That should keep this running for quite a long time. And uh, once the coal generators are in, I can sweep this whole place out. And uh, where was it? Yeah, here, here. And two more in there. Yeah, but once the uh, once this is booted up, I'll actually have the I'm gonna have to put in my natural gas plant right about here. I think yeah. I'm gonna have to rip out a bunch of stuff and move some piping. Where is the pipe? Yes. Whoa, I forgot about that. That's yeah. That's slush geyser water coming down to my main water tank, and this one here is steam geyser water going to my centralized water tank as well. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah, I'm gonna have to make some changes there. But yeah, I'll move those pipes off screen. You don't need to see me doing a little bit of repiping. That's not going to be anything too major. Actually, that is plenty of water right there. I'll turn you off. Yeah, that should be plenty enough. All right. Let's seal this up and fire this sucker up. Uh, what are we missing? No, no, that's all good. Oh, yes. I need to get the super coolant in there. Eh, yeah, that should be fine. Now, because I'm using an overflow system here, it doesn't matter where I plug it in. It'll just keep rotating around. And I actually want to keep this off to start. I don't want to fill the whole thing up. Now, uh, what's this going to be set to? You hmm. thermal sensor. If the temperature in here is above... Yeah, if it's above that, that should mean it stays definitely off even when the supercoolant hits it. All right, we good? Yeah, we're all good there. In that case... Time to put in the power wires. These are going to be a lot of power wires. Oh, yeah, last of the coal generators as well. Would be an idea. Dear Lord. I can't remember the last time I've seen this much coal generation used in one spot. That's not going to do anything good for the decor. Well, nothing healthy anyway. I love that sound they make as they're all hooking up. And plug it into the transformers. Wow. Okay, I just realized that is just a ridiculous amount of power cabling up with that. What's my goal looking at? I am so glad for that gold volcano on this map. I think that's probably one of the best things to have on a map is a gold volcano. It gives you so many options. Well, for late game, it gives you so many options. I mean, you can get by without one if you're just playing a, a straight-through save, but oh, so many options. Actually, you can go there. Totally missed that one. Oh, come on. Don't save now. I'm not finished. <laughs> oh, how are we looking at printables? Do we have a diver's lung? Nope, nope, nope. Damn it. Oh, the weird thing is, I can't actually... I could actually print the barbecue, but... um. Here's the thing, I don't really have an automated storage for it. All my barbecue just ends up down here. And because of that reason... Well, okay, that's kind of getting overloaded. Some of the barbecue's ending up on that tile. But there's no reason for me to actually... There's no way I can actually drop that off there. If I did make a drop-off for barbecue anywhere, it'd start... My dupes would start removing the barbecue from that section and dropping it off there. Uh, that's why all my um, raw ingredients are up there. My dupes can't access that. So I'm able to put a drop-off over here and all my dupes drop it off over there. If there's any eggs or anything around the map. Now, uh, back down to the sucker. How's this looking? Oh, plumbing-wise, let's have a look-see. Okay, that's all circulating. Perfect. 
Ah, I like that. Yeah, I did do some minor testing on this overflow system. Someone probably has a better design. This is just what I came up with off the top of my head. Uh, I really should do some more investigating on this because they do seem like a handy system to use. I might actually start... In future, I'm probably going to modify all my uh, cooling devices to use this. Well, almost all of them. I think it's going to be active pretty constantly. I don't think it needs it. For example, where is it? Uh, yeah, this one over here. This one cools down the main water supply to my base, and it also provides cooling to my main base, so it has a tendency to be active quite a lot. There'll be no need to implement something like that on that one. There's no need to bypass. It's going to be active at least once every minute or so. Yeah, there it goes again. Alright. Uh, how's this looking? Yeah, no one's deleting that because I've queued up about a bajillion power cables. Whoa! I forgot to set these. 2040 copy settings. Why are you on? They should not be on. Oh, not all the batteries are charged. Oh, yeah. Okay, so I should probably set the priority on this a little bit higher so these get finished first, so that coal generators stop pumping. Always something that will catch you. Always. Well, on the bright side, I'm going to get lots of extra carbon dioxide. Oh, and I liquid lock this sucker in as well. I want to make sure all the carbon dioxide stays in here. Oh, uh, this we can turn on to if the temperature in here is above 40 degrees. 69? How is it that hot in there? You know what? Never mind. Okay, a little chill that. That'll start turning that into steam. Oh, this. I made a mistake here, didn't I? Uh, we can plug you into the grid. And pump out all that gas that's in there. Oh, come on, just get those last few chunks. This feels like such a waste of coal. Uh, shouldn't be a problem, though. What's my coal looking like? 829 tons. Yeah, that's reasonable. I can live with that. Actually. No, you're on 40. Let's put you up to 100. Why have you turned off? Active. I just want to charge the last of these batteries. There we go. It was just bugging me that they were all not on the same power level. Alright, that should be fine. Right, that'll pump out that gas. That will give me... Oh, jeez, that's already flashed to steam. Yeah, good. Now I just need to plug in the cooling solution for here. Uh, that will do. And that should be the end of getting the coal boot-up system underway. Hmm. I will say this, now that I've actually got a faster PC to run this on, I, I keep getting caught by the saves. They happen so frequently now. Yeah, done, done, done. Once that's hooked up, we'll have the coolant loop in place. Then we can start cooling everything off. Uh, oh, and I should probably start sweeping out the gas. Actually, no, there's not even... There's not nearly enough carbon dioxide in here, is there? Give me a gas overlay. Ah, there's a little bit. Not much. You know what? Let's throw this sucker on for a bit and uh, reduce the pressure in here. Oh my god, they're still dropping off coal. Okay, I'm going to have to put the kibosh on that. I don't want them dropping off coal unless there's literally nothing else to do. I suppose there is nothing else to do. I've got a lot of dupes. Now. Yeah. One second, I'll just skip forward until we actually get this cooling loop running. Okay, and there we go. Coolant loop is now passing through. Perfect. Okay, so that will just flow through constantly. And all I've done is put it through some diamond tiles here. And I've even used thermium piping because... Well, I might as well. I've got an, I, I went to all the trouble of getting space materials. Oh, no way. I actually ran out of super coolant. I didn't bring enough to fill the loop. Alright. That's okay. I left these here for a reason. Now I just gotta make sure I stay here. Oh, I need a lot of bottle. Until those are all completely full. Am I gonna need two loads? Yeah, I'm, I'm probably gonna need two loads of that. Give me you. Yeah. And that gives me a nice little coal generation system for jump starting this whole place. Nice. Okay, and this super coolant, well, or this cooling loop should help generate a little bit of CO2. Well, it will drain power enough to actually get some CO2 in here. Anyway, another jump cut forward, I think, is in order. We've got most of the basics in place, and uh, next up, I think we're going to be tackling the natural gas power brick. And finally, we're done. All right, that should keep the whole system nice and cool. It'll keep my batteries cool. 
and it'll keep my Kickstarter ready to go. This is 18 kilowatts of power I can draw on just to well, deal with any minor inconveniences or interruptions in power flow because that will be crippling to my base once I get this up and running. I'm going to be depending entirely on this natural gas generator and I need something that can boot kickstart it if something goes horrifically wrong. I'm going to have no real reserve system, unlike the previous system which has this giant tank of, ga or of petroleum to tide me over. This one's not going to have that. This one's just going to be a straight through burner system so I can extract everything straight away. As well as that, storing large quantities of natural gas just takes so much space. It's just not worth it. Uh, pressure in there is down to about two kilos. Yeah, yeah. I'm going to have to turn this back on again in a bit. So you know what? You can keep going. There's enough gas pressure in there to keep everything cool and we've got a cooling system running. And yeah, that's solid. I can now dis dismantle all of this. Anyway, uh, I'll come back in a minute once I'm ready to start building the natural gas uh, power brick. That's going to be pretty large. I'm going to scale it up for about 66 generators. 55 should cover me, but I want an extra roll just in case, well, you know, in case I find a better way to recycle carbon dioxide. Okay, so something interesting happened, and by interesting I mean wrong. Uh, I forgot to vacuum this out. There's actually oxygen in there, which means the steam turbine can't run. If I actually check the gas overlay here, you'll see there's steam on the bottom, oxygen on the top. Yeah, um, also that gas pressure in there is way too high. I can't recirculate the gas. The 20 kilo pressure vent won't handle it. I need some way of getting that out. And I was just going to vent it, but I think I'm just going to try something, well, silly and see if I can't save this. Will it work? Probably not. Is it worth a try? Okay, probably not also. But am I going to give it a go? Why not? Um, what I'm going to do is just basically crack it open and try and let that gas float out, but keep the steam in. Uh, yeah, that's got to go. Yeah, well, deconstruct that. I'm also going to need a viscogel airlock. Uh, yeah. So, hmm. Yeah, we're going to need you gone. That needs to be a brick. Oh, actually, wait, no. This needs to be a brick. Well, it's thinking about it. I know, um. Actually, both of those will need to be bricks. Uh, I'll also need to move that automation wire. Hmm. Come on. How did it even build it that quickly? Hydro sensor. Uh, if it's above that, no. Above, yeah. We'll turn that off. Hmm. Yeah, I'll just fast forward a little bit until I'm ready to go. Now, the guts of my rather silly plan is I'm going to break this open here. That shouldn't let any steam out. And if we're looking at the gas overlays, the oxygen keeps floating to the top, which is good. So then all I have to do is... Wait, why is that doing that? Stop, stop doing that. Uh, now if I just deconstruct these from the inside... Uh, is that buildings only? Yes, buildings only. Oh, you... Okay, if we're doing this right, the gas, the oxygen should all be floating up to the top. Yeah, I, I have like about 20% confidence this is going to work, but uh, I might as well try instead of letting this steam escape. Worst case scenario, I'll let the steam out, but I'd rather not. Oh, damn, okay, it's compressed it too much. Okay, maybe I can get some of it safe. Eh. Uh, maybe that? I can possibly force all the oxygen into one corner and then destroy it? Hmm. Might work. Wasn't exactly what I was planning to do at the start, but... Oh, no, cancel you. We want to leave one place for the oxygen to go. Actually, this might have been easier if I hadn't taken it two levels. Hmm. Alright, this seems like it's... This might actually work. Though, where did that water come from? I'm assuming that got in contact with the visco gel, and that's what chilled it down enough to actually solidify. Eh, gas overlay. What did I... What the... Okay, the block actually overwrote the steam. It didn't escape. Well, that simplifies things entirely way too much. Yeah. When I say way too much, I did have to break open this side here, and I've basically destroyed this vacuum again, so I'll have to vacuum this out, but no big deal. As long as I'm not letting out all that steam, this actually works out quite nicely for me. Though, hmm. Yeah, how am I going to... Did that visco gel... Yeah, that visco gel lock actually moved inwards like it was sucked in. Yeah, that's odd. I have no idea why I did that. Yeah, let's get rid of this junk in here anyway. Hopefully I can seal this sucker up again. Though, am I going to push the visco gel in? 
or is it going to go out, or... You know what? I don't know. We'll find out when it happens. Alright. In the meantime, we can deconstruct all of that junk. we got to put the steam turbine back in. Yeah, you're still off. What's the temperature like in there? 54. Yeah. I want to leave this about 50 degrees because the CO2 is going to be fed to my Slicksters. I want it to be, well, a decent temperature. Now. Okay. This, this is where it's going to get weird. Please force that out. Actually, maybe we should mop that first. Give it somewhere to go? If that forces the visco jelly, and I'm basically right back to square one, and I'm accidentally going to let all that stuff out. Okay, that kind of works. Eh. Alright, let's see what happens. <laughs> There's 143 kilos of visco gel in there. Do not go into the steam area, please. Eh, well, anyway, one way or the other, I'm kind of done here. Worst case scenario, I'll just let all the steam out. It will dump a bunch of heat into the area, but I can live with that more than I can deal with faffing around with this for much longer. I really want to get this uh, boiler up and running. Well, I want to get the natural gas generator started. I'm about 40 minutes into videos here. Okay, what happens? Oh, come on! Ah, uh, that's just mean. Will it still work? I think that will actually still work. You know what? Let's find out if that still works. Uh, oh, gotta deconstruct you. I think it will have reduced capacity. That vent is technically blocked, but the other four are open, so... Yeah, it'll bug me, but I can live with it. Oh, actually, no, get rid of you. And that will give us power out of there, so at least the steam turbine will turn on. Once I get a power cable hooked up, that should actually just start immediately destroying that steam. Yeah, this is probably the messiest steam turbine heat deletion I've ever done. Uh, come on. Someone get along and hook that up. Once that first cable goes in, if that steam turbine kicks on, I know the problem is solved. But yeah, not a bad chunk of... Ooh. Yeah, I left it on for too long. Oops. Yeah, that's pretty much what I always do. What's the gas looking like? Yeah, we need more carbon dioxide in there. And it works. Eh? I can live with that. Eh, uh, now, what was I going to set this temperature to? Yeah, if the temperature's above... Is it 40? Or is it 50? You know what? Doesn't matter. Is that even... One of five inputs blocked. Okay, so it blocked one input. It's not the worst thing in the world. Hmm. Okay, a simple way, semi-simple way, of getting your steam turbines up and running in case anything goes horribly wrong. Uh, yeah, there's always something. Yeah, I'll just uh, clean this up get this place spick and span and then we'll get started on the natural gas generators and they'll be pretty straightforward actually there's not going to be anything too complicated there they're just going to be large the most complicated bit is going to be sorting out the power grid i need to split them into two grids i'm going to have about 50 gens active so i'm going to want 25 on one grid and 25 on the other well in theory we'll see how this works out oh actually there's no way for my tubes to get past that uh yeah there we go then i can seal that sucker in uh, so i'll just skip forward until all this cleanup is done this area looks yep just about right. So we'll leave it at that for now and I'll pop back to you there in two minutes. Okay, right, all I'm putting together here is just the grid for what I'm going to stick all the steam turbines on. Uh, I'm making this all out of gold amalgam mesh because, well, it's the most common material I have, though I've gone below 200 tons, so maybe not that common anymore. Though it's still a lot more common than anything else. Uh, yeah, actually, no, actually, steel is now drawing even. I, can't, I have 174 tons of steel? Okay, that's that's a good sign. Or maybe a bad sign that I've been playing too long. Oh, yeah. Now, I've made this long enough that it should, assuming I've done my counting correctly, hold 11 steam turbo or natural gas generators per row. The reason you want 11... Wait, don't entomb yourself. No, they didn't. Uh, the reason I want 11 per row is to do with how much natural gas a natural gas generator can burn. Natural gas generators can manage... Was it 90 grams a second? So, 11 of them can manage... 990 grams a second, which leaves them 10 grams left over on a one kilo pipe. So it means one pipe can fully provide for 11 generators, with just a tiny 10 grams extra left over. So that's why it's going to be exactly 11 generators per row. 
well, that was my reasoning anyway. Um, actually, you know what? I am going to put in a second fire pole right here. Uh, the reason being, I'm going to have to rip all of this out. It's got to be all replaced anyway. What's that made out of? Iron ore? You know what? We'll stick with the tradition. Alright, come on. Yeah, I'm probably going to have to rip out this fire pole section as well. Hmm. You know what? I should move that floor down. That might be an idea. Yeah, a bit there. Oh, that's why I got rid of that floor. <laughs> yeah, this is going to knock me out of whack. Well, knock me out of alignment with uh, all the floors I have. Don't care. We're in the late game now. Aesthetics can wait. Uh, I'll do this. Deep should be at least able to get some of that across. Uh, next. So, one, two. These are all three tiles high, right? Actually, I better double check the three tiles high before I continue building much more of this. Uh, let's have a look at the power. Now, it's going. To, I'm going to have to build them all out of steel. Yeah, that's perfect. And I'm going to need six floors of this. Yeah, this thing is going to be pretty large. I'm also going to build in some transformers in it just so I can run power directly off it if needs be. I mean, I'm going to be putting in a cooling solution. I might as well get some transformers out of the whole mess. Uh, you can strip all of you. And, of course, I have not moved the pipes at all, have I? No, I have not. Ah. Actually, you know what? I'll wait until after I've finished the box so I at least know where I have to run my pipes around. I don't want to have to rerun them twice. Are they made out of steel? Yeah, all steel, Grant. Okay, next up. Oh, get rid of you. Oh, yeah, that's one thing I don't like about these deodorizers. Oh, that one's fine. Where is it? Give me this one here. See the way it's got polluted oxygen in it? They have a minimum packet size of what they'll actually use. So really check before you dismantle these, especially if it's inside your base where there's no exosuits. Those germs don't go away, they just stay there inside that polluted oxygen, and the moment I dismantle that, that polluted oxygen will escape and those germs will get out. It's an annoyance, but there's nothing you can really do about it. Well, not the way the game is currently structured. Of course, I could put a deodorizer right beside it, so when I deconstruct it, the oxygen would immediately get sucked up, but it won't actually convert it. The packet size is too small, so you'd sort of have to do a chain of deodorizers. Yeah, I'm not that bothered. Now, uh, deconstruct all of this junk. And then we'll actually put in a drop-off. Yeah, one there and there. Why not? Just so my dupes have a little bit of faster access getting in and out of here. Uh, how many more floors do I need? That's three. We are going to need another three floors. Oh, the amount of stuff I have to dismantle here. It feels kind of bad dismantling all this stuff. It's been in here for a while. Uh, so, actually, you know what? That whole thing can go. Oh, oh, God, that is so much. Ugh, is there anything over here it actually needs? Uh, no, I think, yeah, the food axis is the opposite direction. Actually, this can all go. Well, not the plants, but, yeah, this whole transport grid. Uh, not the ladders, not the fire poles, but the buildings can all go. And not the tiles. Okay, you know what? I'll just skip forward and cut past this bit. <laughs> There's no need to see me fumbling around trying to get the right things done. So I've managed to hit another diver's lung. I was beginning to think I was never going to get another one of these. So you've got new recruit number 10. So that's 10 new dupes we've managed to take on so far. So I'm going to have to actually start uh, sending some of them out into the world. They're all actually trained up and good to go. Uh, so recruit number 10. Actually, priorities, where were we? Um, operate. New duplicants will have operate up by one. Yeah, that was suggested by LTL King. Probably should have done that before. That means new ones that I hire will automatically start with their operate plus one. And with all the doors and all the other configuration set up, they should be good to go. The moment they start, they'll just run straight in here and start running. But I've got 10 of them, so time to get some graduates up and running. Uh, new recruit number one. We will make you a cook. And no, you can't cook because you don't like cooking. Okay, you will be... Ooh, uh, actually, we need some more construction people. So why not? We're doing a lot of construction. Uh, you can join in. Actually, mecha uh, mechatronics engineer increases construction by two. I had not realized that. Uh, can they? Oh nope, they can't afford it. But uh, now we'll get them into that later. Now, um, recruit number two. Actually, I still do need a cook, though they do have improved farming. Actually, they can't build. So yeah, you're going straight into cooking. We need a second cook. You'll be our next dog's body. And actually, since that's affected by tinkering, you're going to get some electronics engineering to go with that. New recruit one will be 
Put it again, construction, and you will be cooking. Hmm. Yeah. But I'm going to give them actual names. Well, I am my game froze there for a second. You can tell by the weird haircuts they had. Eh. New recruit one number one. You are going to be a cook, so you will be a uh, dog's body in. And we are going to call you Cohen Visser. Namely because Cohen was the first person to donate a map to, to share out so that people could have a base loving video. And you know, this is the only thank you I can I can really make. So you get to have a dupe named after you inside a base that I'm going to redline and it's probably going to fail catastrophically and the dupe will probably die. So either, uh, uh, I don't know, take it as a thank you or as a, a warning of doom, I'm not sure which. But uh, welcome to the fold. Uh, we'll have to graduate you. Uh, next up is New Recruit 2. I believe second map sent in was by Orion. Now, you all remember Orion because Orion gave us that wonderful circuit board map that makes me feel so bad about the state of my electrical grid. And uh, what were we going to make you? Oh, wait. You were meant... you were going to be... The first one was actually going to be a cook. That's where I messed up. Ah. Where's New Recruit 1? New Recruit 1, you're going to be a cook, actually. So, yeah, Dog's Body in. And uh, New Recruit 2, construction was for you. So you'll be Dig Dug... Ooh, I can't even remember which Dig Dug you'll be. You know what? We'll just make you Dig Dug Orion. Alright. E N E S. Yeah, I thought I'd done missed on the spelling there. But anyway, thanks very much for the map, Orion. Uh, welcome to the base. Uh, hopefully, your dupe won't die. I make no promises. Uh, actually, I gotta do a few things here with the doors to actually let them out as well, so they can join the rest of the crew. Uh, where is Orion? There we go. You can now leave, but you can't get back in. Now oh, I have to redo all the doors. The amount of stuff I have to do with doors here is starting to get ridiculous. Uh, yep, all the way down, and boom. Oh, and I'm going to have to put in liquid locks here. It was pointed out to me that I'm going to start losing atmosphere here. So, yeah, liquid locks time. Um, and considering the just recent problem I had with those... Uh, Actually, yeah, we'll just put them right by the doors. Hopefully they won't get moved around by the doors too much. If I do have any problems, I can always just uh, cut them back. Okay, now these ones down here, I'm going to move these at some point. But for the time being, there's nothing really much I can do. Um, I suppose I can move the plants. No, then I have to... No, I'll do the upstairs ones first, and then I'll get around to the other ones later. Hey, where were we? Ah, yes, this is what it's starting to look like. This is basically going to be the box that contains all the power plants. Uh, I've managed to move most of the piping. I think we've actually drained out... Is that one drained? Yep, yeah, we've drained out all of those as well. We can get rid of all this piping here. I basically rooted, rooted all the piping along... Well, along the outskirts here, and that's all out of ceramic, because I've just realized I've got about 600 tons of the stuff, and I should probably use it a little bit more. I've been hoarding stuff and hoarding stuff for endgame. Well, it's about time I realized it is endgame. Now, uh, I also have put in a ladder system there so my dupes can get around. It's still going to be an awkward trek, but I'll put in a better transportation network later. For the time being, we are going to demolish all of these. Yeah, actually, this whole ladder system can go. Yeah, so... Hmm, I'm also going to have to put in a collection pit down here for the polluted water, so I'll probably put something over here to pump it out. And I'm going to have to mount a cooling solution on the top of this as well so that I can cool it all. And these things generate a lot of heat. Um, well, not so much one of them in one of them, but uh, this natural gas generator gives off 10 kDTUs. Uh, about what? Puisbort uh, is 12, so yeah, wait. I'm going to have about 50 to 55 of them active at any one time. That's an awful lot of heat. In fact, even one full aquatuner running super coolant is going to struggle. Well, not quite struggle. It'll manage. It'll just it'll be tight. I get rid of that power cable as well. I wanted to strip out everything out of this area so it's nice and clean. Oh, yeah, I should probably put in some more of those so dupes can get across. <laughs> this is actually shaping up quite nicely. Oh, and we'll want to put that up there. And what is that gas pipe? Why do I have a gas pipe there? Oh, the chlorine! Oh, oh. I had completely blanked that. Alright, time to go. 
Uh, it's amazing the amount of stuff you leave lying around the map as you play it and you just, you've forgotten that you built it because you built it so long ago and it was for something that's just no longer useful or needed. I'm pretty sure I built this pipe here to actually drain some water over this side. Which reminds me, I've still got more of that to drain, but no, no, no. That's later. Hey, anyway, I'll uh, cut out a bit here until I've actually cleaned this place up. I've also got to strip out a whole bunch, and I mean a whole bunch of all the junk that's lying on the ground. But uh, this will be what the natural gas generators are going to look like. Seven, eight, nine. Oh. Nope. They didn't take. My game's starting to actually chug a bit. Uh, I'm not sure if it's the pathing or what it is. Or it might just be the amount of stuff I have going on at the same time. Uh, that should be 11. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. Yeah, so six rows of those, but only five of them will really be active. The sixth row is just to make sure that nothing bad goes wrong. Because if I do back up on natural gas, it will cause problems with the sour gas boiler design I'm using. Hey, anyway, back to you in one minute. So we're almost up to finishing the, the bare bones of this uh, power block. This is going to be where all the power is generated. Polluted water will accumulate down here. I'm going to have to figure out where I'm going to put the pump. Probably about here. And then I have to wire it up. I need two separate grids off of this. But I can't just run, say, the top three stories into one grid, the bottom three into another. i got to spread the load across all of them. So, uh, yeah, there'll, there'll be some wiring to go on there. i also got to put in the gas inputs and outputs. The, these things output uh, carbon dioxide. So I'll have to pipe that out. And I'll have to input the natural gas. And, of course... I need all of this up and running before I can even think about switching on the the natural gas boiler. Of course, I haven't wired that up yet as well, so that I've also got to do. I've got to build in the natural gas boiler also. But I'm running out of time in this video. I think I'm up to over 50 minutes at the moment before editing, so I'm going to cut this out here. This is the general gist of what we'll be going for in the next video. Um, these videos take a lot longer to put out. I'm not really that uh, used to going this late game, so there's a lot of construction projects i got to do on the side, so these take... I can't get one out a day, so I'm down to about, well, I'll probably get about two out this week and then one base loving video because I've got another bunch of bases I got to look at and do up another video on, and hopefully I can squeeze in about three if I'm organized with my time. Anyway, I'll cut this out here and uh, hope you enjoyed and good luck.